And fortunately, there were people from Sunrise Ranch who gave me an introduction to the truth that Jesus brought, the truth as it was. And I can't tell you what it did for me. I mean, that that the power of that connection to that truth um, has fueled me my whole life. What he brought was so powerful that even though it has hardly persisted, at least in a kind of clear, full-blown way at all, nonetheless, the power of it has been in the mass subconscious ever since. So what did he bring? What was so radical? Many would say he brought love, a teaching of love. And it's hard to read the story without feeling that love. And you can feel it um, related to him, like, wow, what a beautiful man. Related to the truth that he brought. And then it was explicitly, he explicitly taught love. He ex explicitly taught people to love the Lord thy God with all. But then he brought something that was new immediately after saying that. Love the Lord thy God, God with all and love thy neighbor as thyself. That's a different kind of love than had been in the world before. There was a lot of teaching of, oh, love the Lord thy God. Uh, uh, so uh, make a sacrifice for the Lord your God. Uh, be fearful of the Lord your God. Hope the Lord your God treats you nice and doesn't bring a bad hurricane or, you know, whatever it was. Or creates rain for the crops. There was that kind of obeisance, that kind of a fearful love from afar, that kind of superstitious love. But he was not teaching a superstitious love. He was talking about a love love, a real love, a love that brought attraction, closeness, and intimacy. And then a love that was fulfilled in the life of the person by what they actually exuded to their neighbor. That was revolutionary. That was, that was revolutionary. He said, greater love hath no man than that he lay down his life for his friend. And we could easily think that, oh, that he was telling that if you die for your friend, it means you love him. Well, there's a death orientation in the world in which we live that interprets things that way. No, lay down your life, not your death. Give yourself in life for your friend. Greater love have, have no one than that they do that for another person. So another way to say it is that related, related to the divine, related to God, and related to the, the world and other people, he taught a consummated love, a fulfilled love, and what is a consummated love or a fulfilled love? Where does love go? When you love someone, what happens? Well, of course, first of all, there's attraction, right? When there's love, there's attraction. You come together with, with someone or something that you love. You come near. But then there's not just a coming near. There's a joining. There's a uniting. There's a oneness. No. That is a fulfilled love. Oneness. So he gave a prayer very late in his life that is spoken of, of as the prayer of intercession. And it is a prayer of oneness. It is a pr prayer of fulfilled love. This was radical. But can you tell me any place in the ancient world where they were teaching this, whether in Judaism or any place else? So there are these simple words, I in them and thou in me. I 
I in them and thou in me. So who are them? Them were his followers, if you will, the people around him, people with him. I in them and thou, God, in me, the Father in me. Is that not union, spiritually speaking? Spiritual intimacy, spiritual union, spiritual communion, thou in me. Not just the, you up there, me down here, kneeling and fearful and hoping you, you, know, you treat me nice, praying for good things from you. No, no, in me, in me, communion, fulfilled, attraction, but union, in me, thou in me. And I in them, me, my spirit, my love, in the people, invested in the people who are in my life, right? Me and them. Uh, you know, I, how else are you to interpret that other than that way? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, what he wasn't speaking about something physical. Obviously, he was speaking about something spiritual. And what is the spiritual? The spirit, spiritual is something that ultimately comes to focus in love. I believe we're talking about the real thing here. The real thing. I hope we can be, be enthusiastic and charismatic even and full of Shekinah, full of the Holy Ghost without getting weird. <laughs> no, while retaining our authenticity, this is a real thing we're doing. We're not just you know, going nuts over here at Sunrise Ranch. This is a real thing that we're knowing <laughs> and, and, and that we're sharing with each other and sharing with the world enthusiastically, unembarrassedly, unashamedly, you know, because um, we're not bringing some kind of churchified experience to people. That's not what this is. This is something that is innate to us, intrinsic to us as human beings. That we're calling them. Do we have to share? Amen. Amen. <laughs>